This is how to get heat, work, and energy for a reaction. Determine delta H, Q, W, and delta E at 298K and 1 atmosphere for the reaction of 10.040 grams sulfur dioxide with excess oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide. Okay, we should probably start by writing out the balanced reaction. So, SO2 gas plus O2 gas going to SO3 gas phase. Looks like I need a one half in front of the oxygen and we're all balanced. Alright, delta H we can actually get from the tables. So we're going to have to actually take the heats of formation of products minus heats of re reaction, heats of formation of reactants. So this should be actually be equal to the heat of formation of SO3 minus the heat of formation of SO2 minus one half the heat of formation of O2. Now this last one I know is zero because the heat of formation of any material in its standard state that's an element is zero. So that one I know I don't really have to look up but I should look up the other two values. And the table tells me that for one mole of sulfur trioxide the heat of formation is minus 395.72 and for SO2 it is minus 296.83 and that's a minus a minus so that's a plus I will put that into my calculator and the answer is minus 98.89 kilojoules per mole of reaction is written uh, the problem is we don't have one mole of SO2, we have 10.040 grams. So we're going to have to scale our value based on the number of moles of SO2 that we have. So 10.040 grams of SO2 times one mole of SO2 is 64.07 grams of SO2 times our minus 98.89 kilojoules and that's per mole of reaction which also happens to contain one mole of SO2 in my reaction. I will multiply that out and it turns out that delta H is minus 15.496 kilojoules. And let's see, what should we do about sig figs? 3, 3, technically that's 4, so it looks like I should probably stick with four sig figs and go with minus 15.50 kilojoules. Alright, the next question is pretty easy. It's asking for Q and that's actually the same number, minus 15.50 kilojoules. Because Q is actually delta H, um, the heat change under constant pressure. All right, next problem is work. Now, for work, I'm going to have to look at the change in the moles of gas times R times T. So, let's figure out the change in moles of gas for this reaction. Change in moles of gas. Let's see, my final moles of gas is 1, and my initial moles of gas is 1.5, so my change of moles in gas is minus one half a mole of gas per mole of reaction as written. Now since we've gotten um, SO2 as our material that we've been given, I guess I shall write this per one mole of SO2. All right, well once again we don't have one mole of SO2, we have 10.040 grams, so to scale this value and figure out the actual delta N gas, I need to take my 10.040 grams of SO2 
divide by the molar mass of SO2 and then recognize that there is minus one half per mole of gas per one mole of SO2. So that math gives me a minus 0 0.7835 moles of gas. Okay, now I'm ready to put this in my formula. So I will say minus a minus 0.7835 moles of my gas times R, which is 8.314 joules per Kelvin mole of gas times my temperature, which is 298 Kelvin, and that turns out to be 194.12 joules or 0 0.194 kilojoules. Let's see, what to do about sig figs again? Uh, got five sig figs there, and Technically, R is absolute, and temperature is only to 298K. Well, technically, we can pretty much go with a lot of sig figs here, because usually we view that as absolute and that as absolute. So technically, I guess I should say 0.19412 kilojoules. It's really that many sig figs. Okay. Now, the last part of this is pretty easy. The energy change is actually going to be equal to heat plus work. So that will be my minus 15.50 kilojoules plus my 0.19412 kilojoules. And this number is good to the hundredths place, so I think I shall report it as minus 15.31 kilojoules. Okay. So that's all there is to work, heat, and energy change.